and welcome to this edition of Power Wheel, a production of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN. Stay with us as we bring you trending news reports in the power sector. I am Chinwenwa Anyao. The Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, said the federal government has delivered on raising capacity and infrastructure in the power sector as transmission wheeling capacity, among others, has reached 8,000 megawatts. Mr. Fashola, who briefed newsmen in Abuja on his third day progress report, recalled that President Muhammad Buhari inaugurated the Federal Executive Council, FEC, on November 10, 2015. He had briefed the press on December 8, 2015, about his action plans for the power sector as well as works and housing. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my colleagues, Honorable Mustafa Baba Shehuri and Suleiman Hassan Zama, the Honorable Ministers of State who are unavoidably not able to join us today because they have some other engagements outside the country. On behalf of the Permanent Secretaries, Mohamed Buka for Works and Housing, Louis Edozier for Power, on behalf of the Directors and all the staff of the Ministry, the heads of our various parastatals who are with us and their staff, I am proud and happy to report that we have worked our talk and we have delivered visible results and recorded qualitative progress. The minister who reeled out the milestone recorded in the past sector said, With regard to power, we have improved on what we met by increasing generation from 4,000 megawatt to 7,000 megawatt, transmission from 5,000 megawatt. I'm told now that the last simulation is around 8,000 megawatt in transmission and distribution has improved from 2,690 to a peak of 5,222 early in January of this year. Of particular significance was the quantum leap in the reforms for the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, a non-privatized public utility. We are also planning to deliver additional transmission from 90 projects nationwide with Apo, Mayo Belwa, Damaturu, Maiduguri, Odogunyo, and Ejibu being examples of recently completed one. As I said recently, Transmission Company of Nigeria is now in a situation where within 30 to 60 days cycle, they are delivering one or more transmission projects com to completion over the last one year, and we expect this to go on. Reiterating the commitments of the President Muhammad Buhari-led government to attaining incremental stable power supply in the long run, the minister said more generation projects will soon be completed. Our work is clearly not finished, and we are still in the process of delivering additional generation. In Kaduna, we are expecting 215 megawatt in a matter of a few months. In Afam 4, we are expecting 240 megawatt to be finished in a matter of weeks and latest a few months. In Kashimbila, all our equipment is on site to add 40 megawatt. In Gurara, we are expecting 30 megawatt. We are just now doing what you call uh, snag management and in Dadinkowa, 29 megawatt. And two big hydropower plants of 700 megawatt in Zungeru and 3,050 megawatt in Mambila. Fashola, however, acknowledged issues in the power sector, like access to power, metering, among others, as he has assured that they were being addressed. Fashola, who also took time to respond to questions from the newsmen, gave an update on the 3,050 megawatt Mambila hydropower project in Taraba State. For the first time in over 40 years, the federal government of Nigeria has now signed an engineering and procurement contract, essentially what you would call the construction contract. It has been signed after 40 something years. <laughs> President Buhari has made that possible by his leadership. All the companies that were fighting themselves, they were in court when we came. They are out of court. We have a contract, a joint venture by them. We created that joint venture. 
They signed, FERC has approved. The project is going to cost, I think, $5.72 billion or thereabout. So that's progress. Now we are going to raise funding from the Chinese because what we want to build in Mambila is similar to what is called the Three Gorges Dam in China. So they have the technology, they've done it before. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we will take the loan. We're now trying to negotiate the final terms of the loan. Nigerian government is supposed to put 15% of the cost of the project as counterpart funding. Now, you don't budget all of the money at once. And even if the loan was approved today, you won't draw it all down because it's a minimum, I think, 60 months construction time, assuming that there are no hitches. So that's where we are. You will recall that the president was in China recently to meet with other African leaders and he's also had side meetings with the uh, president of China. The president was there, I was there, a lot of meetings went on. We are following the process of compliance to access the loan. But we are also likely to start early works this year. The president has approved that some money as part of the counterpart fund, preparatory work, getting the site ready, that should start this year. Uh, touch wood if we get the funding released and uh, we'll take it from there. Permanent Secretary Paul Louis Edozien, in his response on the federal government's distribution expansion program to improve the services of the distribution companies, discuss said the ministry made the mini grid and eligible customer policies to provide choices for power consumers to get better services. So we're confident that with the distribution expansion, with the implementation of these policies, and the cooperation of the discos, the constituencies that you mentioned will be better served and happier with our progress on incremental and stable than uninterrupted power. As preparations for the execution of three key transmission projects are in top gear, the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, has met with multilateral donor agencies. At the meeting held in Abuja and chaired by the managing director of TCN, Mr. Usman Gur Mohammed, which the objective was to tell the donor agencies the progress being made on the implementation of donor-funded projects and seek further collaborations, Mohammed said TCN has delivered various projects to raise transmission wheeling capacity to 8,000 megawatts. First simulation we did on the grid to know the capacity of the grid after I came was the one we did in December. And the capacity of the grid at December was 7,124. When we did the simulation, the capacity of the grid is now 8,000. We believe that uh, with the support that we are getting from the World Bank, we are buying high capacity conductors and these high capacity conductors we are going to uh, recover some capacity along certain areas of uh, Nigeria. The meeting had in attendance the chairman of the Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC, Professor James Momo, the representatives of the European Union, EU, World Bank, Japanese International Cooperation Agency, JICA, and the AFD, French Development Agency. The donor agencies are expected to endorse the three key projects this month. While the Federal Executive Council, FEC, approves their execution, a document presented by Mr. Mohammed at the meeting stated. In his presentation, Mr. Mohammed explained the three key projects, which are the $486 million Nigerian Electricity Transmission Assets Project, NETAB, being financed by the World Bank. The $200 million Lagos Ogun transmission project financed by JICA and the Northern Corridor transmission project with funding of $245 million and $25 million Euro by AFD and the EU. The line that we are building, the second line that we are building from Oshoko to the Nimbus, cannot take them. So we are building, uh, we are building another one, three, three times the line. From Omoto Show, we are building not from Omoto Show. Currently, we do Omoto Show and then we are building two other lines. So, 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 so we need to do that. Now, that study we are also sending to the World Bank, and this is the place we want to do contractor finance. We want to do contractor finance. We want to clear the right of way, 
clear everything that will disturb the trade conversation. We even put a grader to clean the particular things, and then we tender it. And we know what sovereign guarantee. We want to test the same capacity to do contractual finance without sovereign guarantee. That's what we want to do on this one. So we are under the uh, data, uh, World Bank have money to prepare project for private sector investment. And that's what we want to test this, this one. He said the project will have two 330 kV double cycle transmission lines from Kainji to Kanu through Burning KB, Sokoto, Kastina to boost bulk electricity evacuation capacity of TCN in the Axis. Mr. Mohammed, who is also the chairman of the West African Power Pool, WAP, said with such massive projects and the rising power generation and transmission capacity of Nigeria, there was need for the activation of the regional electricity market to boost power trading and reduce the high cost of energy in the region. Actually looking at looking for additional cheaper source of getting energy in West Africa. And we are looking at the possibility of connecting to Central African Power Pool and connecting to North African Power Pool. To Morocco and to Cameroon. So we are targeting Inga 3 and we are also targeting what we can get from, from Morocco. And that's why if you look at this line here, this is what they call uh, uh, this is medium backbone. This medium backbone will run from Shiroyo to, uh, um, to Zugelu, to Kaenji, to Paraku, to Northern Togo, Northern Ghana. If you link to the line that Ghana has built, which was commissioned just uh, recently, from Southern Ghana to Northern Ghana, and then to Burkina Faso, if you link to that line, and if you land in the Port The TCN head, in his further presentation to the donor agency's representatives, some the objectives of the company's transmission rehabilitation and expansion program, TREP, that seeks to achieve 20,000 megawatt buck electricity wheeling capacity by the year 2021. Do not build under transmission power lines for your safety and health. Electricity power lines and substations, either for power transmission or power distribution services, are extremely dangerous when exposed to direct human contact. These power lines and substations transmit electricity that lights up our homes and offices, power our computers, TVs and refrigerators. On the other hand, the same electricity when exposed is extremely dangerous. It can shock, electrocute and kill anyone on its way. That is why everyone must adopt safety measures whenever we use or are close to electricity facilities like power lines or substation or transformers. For the safety of the people and animals, governments all over the world have approved way leave or right of way of 50 meters for 330 kV power lines and 30 meters for 132 kV power lines and for 33 kV lines the way leave is 15 meters. People are not expected to be found within this way leave or right of way for safety reasons. The lines can suddenly cut and fall to the ground with very disastrous consequences such as fire and electrocution of anybody and destruction of anything, be it vehicle, houses or vegetation on its line. It has also been established that power lines and substation emit electromagnetic fields, EMF, which is dangerous to human health. The World Health Organization, WHO, has warned that people who spend long hours under or close high tension lines stand the risk of being affected by EMF and be vulnerable to cancer leukemia in children, miscarriages among pregnant women, and other terrible diseases. It is therefore advisable not to build any structure or operate any business under or near any electricity high tension lines or substations. TCN wants you to stay alive, stay safe, stay healthy, avoid power lines. This message is from the management of Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN. You're still watching Power Wheel to accelerate progress in development of power and other infrastructure in Nigeria. The Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, says there was the need for teamwork and cultivating understanding among officials of the ministry so that they can deliver on their mandates. The minister made this remark at the recently concluded fifth top management retreat of the ministry held in Sokoto. He said, if we do not understand each other, 
clearly our work and the need for us to work together will be much more difficult. But we can gain more time, we can do a lot more. If I understand how the Minister of State will think, I can anticipate him, he can anticipate me. If I understand what the Permanent Secretary in power or the Permanent Secretary in works are likely to do in a given situation, we become much more efficient, much more coordinated, and certainly much more productive. So these retreats are not a school. This is not what they are. It is really for team beauty to get to know ourselves more. Mr. Fashola said there are sessions where experts share experiences with the officials for them to learn something new during the quarterly retreats. More importantly, I think it provides for me, and I hope for all of us, an opportunity to stand back and reflect. Where are we? What have I done with my time in the last 400 and so days when the last retreat held? Have I improved? Am I sliding back? Where should I concentrate? You will find out that this is difficult to do in the pressure area where you work. He commended the team for the positive record in past sector improvement reflected by the National Bureau of Statistics NBS report of the second quarter of 2018, saying, So on all indices, clearly, we have moved the needle forward. And it didn't happen because of me or because of my brother here. It happened because of all of us. All of us. And so, now that we have an indication that we have been running and the numbers are moving a little bit, perhaps it's time to go back and reflect that can we improve on these numbers. And I think that we can. The Permanent Secretary Works and Housing in the Ministry, Mohamed Booker, during his remarks, said the theme of the retreat, public service and the ease of doing business, was carefully selected to capture the essence of the moment. We wish to assure the Honourable Ministers that we in the Ministry have come to terms with Executive Order 001 in the way we interact with our in-house and outside customers. We have improved substantially in the way we implement our procurement processes with speed, although within the limits allowed by Public Procurement Act 2007. We also respond promptly to inquiries and acknowledge correspondences within the shortest possible time. Support matters are also receiving required attention within the limit of available resources as a way of motivating them for higher efficiency effectiveness and productivity. The Transmission Rehabilitation and Expansion Program, TREP, of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, is visible in the Bini Regional Control Center of the company. In this interview, the General Manager Transmission at the region, Engineer Jimmy Adetola, speaks on the ongoing transmission capacity upgrade and expansion activities. What is the place of Bini region in the transmission of electricity across Nigeria? Bini transmission region is a region that is at the center of activities of TCA. We have 15 numbers, 330 kV lines here in Benin. We are the gateway to, to the south, to the west, to the east, and to the north. So we can be able to call the hub for TCA. It will also interest you that all our 330 kV lines, which is our national grid, they are all connected to power stations. So that implies that any trouble, any problem around this place, the whole system will feel it. So that, and that is why the staff here are working 24-7. The 
3,000 kV lines I mentioned, that is the national grid that TCN operates. That is where all the generating stations are connected. So we control a lot. There is no region that has up to half of what we have in terms of 330 kV transmission lines. So, of course, we have, I have three AGMs. The AGM has 18 sub regions. We have the Nis South sub region. We have Delta sub region headed by AGM also. We have Formato Shore headed by AGM. Then we have two work centers. We have Sapele Work Center headed by Principal Manager and Benin North headed by Benin North uh, Work Center headed by Principal Manager as well. What are the various improvements your region has recorded in terms of infrastructure? We commissioned a 60 MV at Akure. I mentioned that too. So that was what increased the capacity of Akure from the former 2 by 30 and 1 by 60 now to 2 by 30 and 2 by 60. So we just commissioned a 60 MV transformer there. At Urua, there is a 60 MV transformer that is there and the project is ongoing. It's not yet completed. Also at Edsaco substation, TCM move a mobile transformer there, 45 MV transformer. The, the project is on, ongoing now. The mobile transformer is already completed, the installation is completed, we have even commissioned it, I mean we have tested it, but it's not in use now because there is a uh, 30 kV circuit breaker base that is required to service the community. That project is ongoing, is about 80% completed, so we have not completed that one, so that's what is holding that substation now. By the time we are through with that substation, the Auchi environment, because Esako substation is within Auchi. So those, that environment, including Irua and even Kukula, is going to bring a lot of relief to them over there. Then at Akure, at Akure Town itself, there's a 330 kV substation project that is ongoing. In fact, that project is 95% completed. The station has two numbers, 150 MVA transformer. It has two number 60 MVA transformers, so, plus six number 30 kV circuit breaker base. So when that play, uh, project is completed, Akure, Ekiti, and Evaro, they will really have better and perfect electricity supply. That project is about 95% true. What motivation do you get in driving this region? We engineers and professionals, what normally motivates us is that if we have a breakdown and we are able to get out of it and solve it, it gives us internal joy and that's what has been keeping us going. We are so used to it and that is why when we have issues, the only thing we are thinking about is how to solve this problem. I want it to solve we have that joy, we have that relief. Up next is Soundbite of the Week. We have significantly raised support from multilateral donors to ensure that we put N-1 across the country. So time seeks to put N-1 all over Nigeria meaning every equipment that goes out should not affect the supply of that place. And that is the purpose of this uh, transmission, rehabilitation and expansion program. We're bringing you more reports in the Power Flash segment. Please don't go away. We hope you had an exciting time with us on this edition. Join us on Power Wheel again, same time, same station next week. Until then, you can watch our episodes via our YouTube channel 
and as well reach us through these other platforms showing on your screen. I am Chinwenwa Anyao. Bye for now.